Good evening. Welcome to Northside United Methodist Church for our Monday Thursday worship service. Hope you'll excuse me, that sun is right there, so I can't really see you. But uh, tonight is the night that, that we can uh, commemorate uh, the Last Supper of Christ. It is the night that we think of uh, uh, the things that he left us. Uh, before he died, the things that he told his apostles were so very important. We will, uh, we will take together, we will share a meal at, at God's table, at the communion table tonight. And then at the end, um, we will have a reading from the book of John, a reading that uh, depicts the, uh, the, the passion of Christ, the crucifixion of Jesus and, uh, and his death. Um, so at the end of the service, it will be the last thing we do. As, as we read th these passages, I will extinguish a candle. And then uh, finally the Christ candle will be extinguished. And in that moment then, we will, we will strip the altar of its, uh, its pyramids. And uh, I would ask that in that time uh, that, that we be quiet and reflective after the altar is uh, covered and the items taken off of it, I would ask that we all walk out to the, uh, to the cross on the lawn, and then uh, Clay will help me, and we will, we will place the black cloth on, um, on the cross. So we're glad that you're here with us for this Holy Thursday. Um, let us begin our worship now. With our call to worship, it is in your bulletin. Come, you with dirty feet, aching backs, and weary souls. We come bearing a heavy load of worry, frustration, and isolation. Come, you who are hungry, thirsty, longing to meet the one who will feed you, body and soul. We come with emptiness in our stomachs and our hearts, desperate to be filled. Come to meet Jesus, who kneels to wash our dirt and our grime, who feeds us with bread and with love that never ends. We come to receive the balm for our anxiety, the provision for our hunger, the antidote for our loneliness. Come to receive a new commandment. Love one another as Christ has loved you. We come to embrace this new commandment so, so that, that everyone, everyone will know we are, are disciples of Jesus Christ, God incarnate, who came to live and love among us. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you knew your hour had come. You knew your betrayer. You knew your enemies. But you loved unto the end. Thank you for loving us even unto death. Teach us to love like you love. Teach us to love each other, to love even our enemies like you loved us. On that solemn evening, you surrounded yourself with friends and enemies, persons of faith and persons of ill will. Help us to be able to always emulate you when we are surrounded by our friends and especially when we are surrounded by our enemies. You established a new commandment to love as you loved us. Help us to live it out in every moment and in every aspect of our lives. On this holy day, we gather to remember again the miracle you performed in our lives. You have brought us into the marvelous light at great cost to you. You have given us new life and life eternal. Amen. Let's stand together, and we're going to sing all the verses of hymn 288. There's five verses, so just stand as you're able. I just couldn't leave any of these verses out. We had to do them all. Let's stand together.
you may be seated. As we continue together in worship, let us recite together the prayer of confession that's, that's uh, printed in your alt, uh, bulletin, please. Almighty and merciful God, the fountain Found of all, all goodness, goodness, who knows the, the thoughts, thoughts of our hearts, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you. Wash us, we implore you, from the stains of our past sins. Give, Give us grace and power to put away all offenses. Being delivered from the bondage of sin, may we bring forth fruits worthy of repentance and at last enter into your promised joy through the mercy of our blessed one, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. God, as your word comes to us tonight on this, on this holy evening, Lord, let it pierce our very hearts. We have learned in weeks past that we have a hardness to our hearts and that only Jesus can, can, can break through that hardness to, to give us hearts that are soft, hearts that are pliable, hearts of love. 
we seek that tonight, Lord, as you loved us. Lord, use me as an instrument of your word now. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our gospel lesson for our sermon tonight is John 13, verse 31 through 38, the, uh, some of the events of the, uh, the Last Supper and Jesus' last evening with his, with his closest friends. Hear now God's word. When he, that is Judas, had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus answered, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks 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 be to God. God. There's a song that probably we all know. Um, It goes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. I think probably most of us remember the song. By our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. That song is easy to learn, it's easy to sing, it's easy to remember, but maybe not so easy to do. At least not so easy when we include others in the equation. Loving Jesus is easy, sort of, but other people, maybe not so much. The Thursday of Holy Week is more commonly known as Maundy Thursday. Maundy comes from the word mandate. A mandate is a command. It's not a general idea. It's not a suggestion. Today, around the world, many in the church will follow the mandate of Jesus as we will to practice communion. Jesus said, whenever you take this bread and drink from this cup, remember me. We take that mandate to heart. Some on Monday, Thursday will point to the time when Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. As he did, he said, or after he did, he said, I've set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. But if we were to stop there at the end of the the foot washing in John's gospel, we miss the most important mandate of all. Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you, love one another as I have loved you. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus' commandment to love is repeated over and over and over. And repeatedly, this love is named the distinguishing mark of a disciple. If you love me, Jesus says, you will keep my commandments. And in case we missed it, over and over and over you are my disciples if you love one another the certainty of loving 
Loving others is the mandate of Jesus. The model is Jesus the Christ. It is the very heart of our Christian faith. Jesus made love a commandment. Loving others is the sign, he said, that we are a part of the fellowship of believers, that we are a part of the family of God. Our discipleship as a part of the church is not defined by how often or how much of the Bible we read. It's not defined by our acts of charity, not by the hours of time that we come to worship. It's not defined by purity of moral character. None of those things show people that we belong to Christ as Jesus said we belong all of that is good and there are good things that we should do but the true sign is something else entirely Jesus said by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another well how do we do that how do we show love for one another and who has shown you love like Christ's love Those are the questions I placed before you tonight. When we receive this sacrament, when we kneel at the rail or we stand before the cup and the bread with one another, we hear the words echo in our heads of one another. But loving others isn't always easy, and we come confessing that it is really more difficult than it should be for us. Maybe harder than we want it to be. In the church, we have a great blessing because we live in a community, the community of faith. We have the privilege of loving in community, being loved in community. And we have the opportunity to learn to love. Who in our church family has made a difference in your life? Who has made a difference in your growth as a disciple? Who has been this one another for you? Teaching you how to be one another for someone else. For some, love is words that we say. For others, Love is the deeds that we do. But the blessing is that in the church, we learn how to love as Jesus loved us. Today, we gather to say thank you to the one who called us together. But we're also here to thank each other for the love we experience through this family of God Jesus commanded the wind and the waves to be still. He raised people from the dead. At his return, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. His divine power inspires awe and adoration. Driven by love, he became our Savior, a Savior who was broken and battered a Savior who is memorialized in hospitality at this table, and a Savior who was betrayed even in the midst of blessing. His love means that we can come to Him honestly and unafraid of our own brokenness as we share in the Lord's Supper tonight, as you take the bread and drink the cup. I ask you to slow down and savor the divine gift of love that that came through the sorrows of Jesus, our Savior. Jesus inspires us to live in a way that sets us apart from the world. How does the world know that you belong to Christ? How does he know 
that the church is the people of Christ. It is through love. Love takes time. It takes sacrifice. It takes effort. Especially when we look back and see that what Jesus actually said was not love the best you can, love with what is within you. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, love as I have loved you. When we love as Jesus did, when we love sacrificially, giving of ourselves so others might live more abundant lives, the world will know that we belong to Jesus, that Jesus is indeed alive and doing a great work in the world. And through that love, the world and everyone in it will be transformed. Tonight we will come together around Christ's table. It is not a north side table. It is not a Methodist table. It is Christ's table. We believe when we come together and we take these elements, the bread and the juice, that because Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, that somehow tonight he is with us. We may not know how, but we trust those words. Let us join now in thanksgiving. You can follow along in your hymnal on page 13, I believe it is. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them up, up to the Lord. Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity, and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth, earth are filled with your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. When we had turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us in him your crowning gift. Emptying himself that our joy might be full, he fed the hungry. He healed the sick. He ate with the scorned and forgotten. He washed his disciples' feet and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water in the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for, up for us, he took the bread, he gave you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which will be given for you. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave you thanks. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take all of you and drink from this, my blood of the new covenant. It will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do it, he said as often as you drink it, 
in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Christ Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Almighty God, on all that are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. Jesus' body was broken and given for you. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the blood of Christ. So I invite you to come down. I will serve the bread. The juice is in cups here on either side of the, of the altar. And I invite you to, uh, to kneel at the altar as, as you wish. Please come now and share in the table of Jesus Christ.
Jesus went forth with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas poured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to befall him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word which he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Judean authority seized Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caius, who was a high priest this year. It was Caiaphas who had given counsel to the religious authorities that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. As this disciple was known to the high priest, he entered the court of the high priest along with Jesus, while Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. The woman who guarded the gate said to Peter, Are not you also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warning, warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The, the high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jewish people come together. I have said nothing to secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand saying, is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, if I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Anna sent, then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They said to him, are not you also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. 
One of the servants of the high priest, a kinsman of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once the cock crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not an evildoer, we would not have handed him over. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The religious authorities said to him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. This was to fulfill the word which Jesus had spoken to show by what death he was to die. Pilate entered the headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kinship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight that I might not be handed over to the religious authorities. But my kingship is not from the world. Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After Pilate had said this, he went to the religious authorities again and told them, I find no crime in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. Will you have me release for you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. The religious authorities answered him, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard these words, he was, more, he was the more afraid. He entered the headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, you will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Upon this, 
Pilate sought to release him, but the religious authorities cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, and in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour, he said to the religious authorities, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. They handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which is Hebrew for Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth the king of the Jews. Many of the Judeans read this title. For the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The Jewish chief priest then said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews. But this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each shoulder, soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from the top to the bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cloephas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the religious authorities asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth that you also may believe. For these things took place 
that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the religious authorities, asked Paul, Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who had at first come to him by night, came bringing a mixture of mirth and aloe, about a hundred pounds weight. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices as the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden and in the garden a new tomb where no one had ever been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, as the tomb was closed at hand, they laid Jesus there. Let's stand together and turn on our hymnals to hymn 292, What Wondrous Love Is This? We'll sing all four verses. What wondrous 